What's happening guys, John the Realtor here for part six of this series for the residential purchase agreement and joint escrow instructions, page two. Um, we talked about in the last video, uh, all your offer um, information and loan information. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about page two. Now, one thing I failed to mention is on every page you will see the uh, property address once you input it. Generally, when I first input it, when I fill out an offer, is I put it at the wire fraud um, page because it's a lot easier, and I'll, and I'll show you why really quick. If you go back to the wire fraud, um, this one here, basically, it's yellow, so what I do is I input everything, right? Um, and then what I will do is, uh, well, California all capital. But anyways, what I typically will do is it'll it'll normally automatically find the address for you um, so that once you do that, it'll actually place it for you on page one. And then you'll just have to fill out the county and the APN. And then going forward, it'll be automatically filled out. That's how I do it. Some people don't do it that way, but that's how I do it because it's just easier. So going to page two, your first section here is your seller credit, if any. I filled this in just to kind of show you what it means. If your buyer is purchasing a home or if you're a buyer purchasing a home, um, the, the seller credit is, only needs to be filled out if you're asking for one. So if you talk to the lender and the lender's like, look, I need 1% or 2% of the purchase price, you can go in and ask them for a specific amount. Generally, um, that's what I do because it makes it a lot easier. So what they might say is, you know what, let's go with 1750 and then we'll go from there. So um, if you don't need one at all, once again, you uncheck it and you're good to go from there. Um, additional financing terms would be if there's anything um, anything additional, like let's say you do a seller carry finance, then you can input those details here along with a seller carry financing addendum uh, and go from there. So verification of all cash, verification of down payment and closing costs and loan application are all uh, attached either to the offer or you can submit them within a certain amount of time. Three days is the default meaning proof of funds, meaning um, lender approval letter, that kind of thing that is gonna uh, uh, be provided to the listing agent when you submit your offer, okay? Uh, final verification of condition is uh, the final walkthrough for the buyer. So as buyers, they have the right to go into the property five days prior to the close of escrow, or in this case, I changed it to two days because a lot of people wait till the loan um, is, is, has final approval and, and, and docs are out, which typically is a couple days before escrow closes. So in this case, um, I changed it to two, but generally it's about a week or so before the close of escrow. Uh, the, the buyer goes and, and makes sure that the condition of the property is basically the same as when they found it. Um, and we'll go into that on the future pages where it explains it as well, because um, again, the paragraph number will actually explain each section in detail. Um, so 8A loan, so, so everything here as far as your contingencies is 17 days, okay? You have your loan contingency, you have your appraisal contingency, you have your investigation of property, um, reviewing of seller documents, all that stuff is 17 days. You can change that to ask for a longer period of time. So let's say you have a 60 day escrow, you can ask for longer, so 25, 30 days for your contingencies. If you have a shorter escrow, like a 25 day, then obviously you don't want to take up the whole time. Generally, you can change that down to whatever you and your buyer agree to. Um, your buyer has to be the one to want to do that and to be okay with that. So in this case, I put it down to 10 days uh, of the of the for the loan contingency. But again, that can be changed based on the situation. Okay. Um, going down to time of possession. Time of possession is super important. So. Time of possession means that as soon as escrow closes, meaning there's recordation, it records with title in the county, the buyer technically has possession, or it says at 6 p.m., or at whatever time on a date specified. So um, typically sellers will ask for three days or two days or five days in addition to the close of escrow to be able to move out. So that house has to be contractual. It all has to be specified in the contract. Um, and then if not, it would just be upon when it records and you're, and you're done at that point, right? So 
Um, same thing goes for seller occupied. So if your seller needs to occupy the property, let's say uh, for 15 days after the close of escrow, then you would change that and there's an additional form, an addendum called the uh, um, seller in possession SIP, which would be added to the contract as well. Uh, so that all just gonna vary based on the situation, okay? Same goes for tenant occupied units. Now in this case, you have additional document uh, fees and compliance. So you have seller delivery of documents, typically seven days. I normally change that to five days. A uh, sign and return escrow holder provisions and instructions is five days. Time to pay fees for ordering HOA documents. This one's important because this one can be delayed sometimes depending on the HOA uh, that's involved here. So you notice time to pay fees for ordering HOA documents. That is a three day period. Now, if you think that it's gonna be a little bit longer, you can change that to five days, seven days, whatever that is. But the HOA, like I said, can be delayed. So it's super important that that gets done within that, those three days. So um, keep that in mind. In addition to installing smoke alarm, uh, CO detectors and water uh, heater bracing, if that isn't done at the property for whatever reason, then what you can do is you can specify a specific number of days. Look, I'm gonna get my home inspection. I need this stuff done within seven days or less or longer. Again, if you have a 60 day escrow, then some of these could be changed for a longer period of time so that just in case things fall through, you never know, okay? Um, so guys, this is super simple, these things here, but everything is detailed in the contract. So on the next video, we're gonna look at page three, which are your allocated costs. So the super important thing here is that to put everything in the contract, because if there's any kind of negotiations later, guess what I'm gonna tell you as a listing agent? It's not in the contract, let's stick to contract. So that is super important to do two things. Make sure your contract is filled out fully and correctly, and make sure that all the terms that you would like in your contract are written in it. Because if they're not in it and you try to go back later, later excuse me, to negotiate, that seller may say no uh, based on the fact that it wasn't there to begin with. So, um, you know, every situation is different. So I hope this helped. This was page two. We're going to go to page three next. And um, until then, make sure you like this video so that it spreads. And then I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have questions, please put it down in the comments and I'll be sure to uh, respond to those comments and questions and go from there. In the meantime, have a great day. Take care.